In the previous video, we looked at linear probing as a way to handle hash table collisions, but is that the only way? Or can we do something better? In this video, we take a look at quadratic probing as an alternative to linear probing. We spend some time understanding what quadratic probing is and how it is better than the linear counterpart. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focused group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Greek buzzes live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design, from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So like always, conflicts are inevitable as we are trying to fit in a large application key space into a smaller hash table, right? We are talking about open addressing as a technique to do so, which is very space efficient as we do not require an auxiliary data structure to do it, right? To handle hash table collisions. So, but how do we find the next available slot in the hash table so that we can place our key at that particular slot in case there is a collision, right? In the previous video, we looked at linear probing to do it, where we literally found a primary slot and if that is occupied, we went linearly moving forward in the right direction until we find an empty slot, right? Now, in this video, we'll talk about quadratic probing. Quadratic probing is an alternative to linear probing and what it basically does is instead of using a linear function, it uses a quadratic function. We'll just talk about it in two minutes, right? So first, just to recap, what is a probing function? Probing function takes is, is a function of the key that you would want to place in the hash table and an attempt, right? So with zeroth attempt, it should give you the primary slot. If that is occupied, you change i, which is your attempt number. It goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 till m minus 1, where m is the size of the hash table. This way, you would be, you would be deterministically getting the next slots where you may place your key, right? So this is the importance of probing function. Now let's recap about the challenges with linear probing. So what we know about linear probing, it first finds the primary slot. If that is occupied, it would go to the right, which is basically finding the next available slot by moving to the right. Once it hits the array at the end, it starts from the index zero. Right? A big challenge with linear probing is that it suffers from it suffers from basically cascading collisions or you may also call it, uh, you may also call it clustered collision. So here what would happen is when a key is placed in a particular location, let's say k1 is placed at index 2 and let's say k2 also came in, which also got hash to index 2, right? And because k1 is already occupied the slot 2, your k2 would have to be placed at slot 3 because slot 3 is empty. But now, if we talk about K3, let's say K3 came in and K3 got indexed at slot 3, but slot 3 is occupied by K2. So, K3 would have to move forward. So, you see a good cluster of collisions happening in a small area, right? 
and this typically happens because of a poor hash function right so we know that with a poor hash function linear probing would suffer and that is a biggest challenge with it right so how so then as an alternative way to do it what about a way through which we can reduce clustered collisions right so we don't want a lot of collisions happening in one place because it's literally with linear probing it's literally one slot getting collided by multiple keys and they just move a step to the right right this way you're forming small clusters of collisions. so any key that goes there they will be collided so a poor hash function would typically lead to this now let's see how quadratic probing solves it so let's take a look at what quadratic probing is so instead of uh, instead of putting the key in the next available slot immediately to the right by moving one step at a time what we do is we find the successive value through a arbitrary quadratic function buzzwords simple enough wait so linear probing what we did is p of k comma i which is a probing function k comma i where i is the attempt number is equal to h of k plus i where h of k is the hash of the key that gives you the primary slot and i gives you the offset so offset will start from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 which means you are literally traversing through the array one after another one slot at a time until you find an available slot this led to clustered collisions because everyone is just collided to this one place right so as an alternative what you can do is instead of going one step at a time take a quadratic function for example p of k comma i is equal to h of k which is a primary slot plus c1 of i plus c2 of i square so when you do this what happens is instead of going one step at a time you are taking a quadratic leap this way your clusters will not be formed because they would be spaced very well and think about i square so i square is the attempt square so zeroth attempt would give you the primary slot then one square is one two square is four three square is nine four square is 16 so that's how big of a leap it would going to take so this would help you minimize the clustered collisions that you would get in case of linear probing right sample sequence if i talk about it so obviously because it's a quadratic function your your c1 cannot be zero because you want i uh, sorry your c2 cannot be zero where p of ki is equal to h of k plus c1 of i plus c2 of i square we don't want i square to be ever zero otherwise it would transform into a linear probing so that is where c2 should not be zero that's where it becomes a quadratic probing right let's quickly take a look at how it is better than linear probing it basically reduces the problem of clustered collisions and cascaded collisions because the next slot the next available slot that it tries to hunt deterministically is is basically quadratic leap ahead right this way you would get so with linear probing you are not getting equi spaced or near random spaced uh, keys or uh, or near random space where you can place your collisions right with quadratic probing what you are getting is you are taking bigger leaps in order to place your successive collided keys this way you get this advantage that hey even though my hash function is not good but with collisions i'm trying to reduce cluster collisions by placing them a little far away from each other right this way it is a little better than linear probing only with respect to handling clustered collisions right now let's take quick, let's take a look at two properties of quadratic probing obviously grass is not always green we'll talk about few 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 loopholes here as well first property we all discussed it reduces the clustered collisions by distributing it quadratically right it is obviously not immune to clustered collisions because you can clearly see that if you are getting large number of keys for the same slot they would all be collided but other keys going to those other slots they would still be almost equally not really equally but but good enough sparse distribution of keys would be there right so it reduces but it is not eradicating it right second point now this is what also was an advantage of linear probing is that quadratic probing has a good locality of reference but it is not as great as linear probing we know that how linear probing leverages cpu cache in order to make iterations faster so just to reiterate on that 
if you are trying to access a of 2 let's say you have an array a with let's say 10 15 30 items and you are trying to access a of 2 so when you are accessing this from main memory this page this memory page would be brought into cpu cache and from there it would be accessed right let's say if there is a collision in a of 2 and obviously when you are talking about a page that it, brought, it brings in it is not just bringing a of 2 it is bringing neighboring elements as well because the number of elements of an array or the segment of an array that could be brought into the memory would be brought into the memory uh, into the cpu cache my bad okay so when it is you are accessing a of 2 it is not just accessing a of 2 but 3 4 5 6 for example they are also brought in memory and when that happens let's say you found collision at a of 2 and then you are iterating a of 2 is not available let me go to a of 3 when accessing a of 3 it would already find a of 3 in cpu cache so it would not have to do a memory lookup much faster so linear probing is the best way to leverage your cpu cache and it's really fast right but quadratic probing also not does a it, it, it also does a fair job to it because what you are seeing is if your hash function is good enough that it does not cause a lot of collisions then you here also you are leveraging a good cpu cache right because if you think about quadratic probing so your your uh, your next available slots would be let's say you are accessing a of 2 and if a of 2 is collided you are taking a quadratic leap right so a of 2 then you'll go to a of 3 as in plus 1 and then a of 6 which is plus 4 right so 1 square 2 square 3 square and so on and so forth so if you talk about a small memory page of 5 slots you are bringing a of 2 a of 3 a of 4 a of 5 a of 6 so you are already bringing in 3 slots that you may find your key in right so this way at least for some iterations because if you are not having a lot of collisions then at max 2 to 3 or 4 average collisions if happens all of those can be found in your uh, CPU cache because you are fetching that contiguous memory uh, segment into your CPU cache right so it gives you a good uh, it gives you a good uh, leverage of CPU cache but not as excellent as linear probing while solving the problem of clustered collision that is where quadratic probing is a little little better than linear probing in some case but if your hash functions are poor where a lot of keys are hashed to the same location that ruins everything because then you would have a big a large number of collisions then you would have to iterate through 7 square 8 square or maybe even 100 square right and that is where the problem would start in right so that is where you have to be very aware on the advantage that you'll get when you use clustered uh, when you use basically quadratic probing it minimizes your problem or your issue with uh, clustered collisions it gives you decent enough uh, CPU uh, it gives you decent enough leverage of your CPU cache it is still just reducing it not not eradicating it completely right a little better than linear probing uh, when you have fewer collisions on a particular set of key right with a good decent hash function quadratic probing triumphs over linear probing right okay that's it that's it about quadratic probing I hope uh, I went into enough details for you to understand and make those decisions if you're ever building a hash table on which one to go for linear or quadratic and how to implement it it's really very simple at all it's all about just tuning your probing function right okay so as part of this uh, probing strategies for hash table next video will be the final one that we will be covering uh, double hashing as a technique and then we'll go into advanced part of it like load factors and whatnot a lot of things are planned there nice so yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week. And this video is part of Hashtable internal series. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Atom.